So today we're connected with the Mumbai portal uh, and the Chigli portal in Rwanda. We could go ahead with start a uh, good round of introductions and then we'll jump right into the conversation. So, yes, thank you. Okay. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Khushi and I'm the facilitator here at the Mumbai portal. Uh, just to give you like brief knowledge, the Mumbai portal is located in the heart of the city in Dharavi. If you Google, if for our viewers um, on the internet and even for our participants here in Chikli, if you Google Dharavi, it says that it is the largest slum in Asia. But what a lot of people don't realize, that is a lot more than that. It single-handedly repurposes, reduces, and recycles more than 80% of the waste that the city generates. If you walk out of our portal right now, you will see a large ground because we're based out of a school called Chhatrapati Shivaji School in Dharavi. And when we cross the road, across the road, we have our Maharashtra Nature Park, which is a very, very, very unique park because since we were talking about a lot of the waste that the city generates, it has been built on top of an actual dumping ground. In the 1980s, that used to be a dump yard. And right now, when you go and witness that space, it is one of the most beautiful spaces you can be part of within the city and just right here in the center of the city. Without further ado, I would really enjoy for my guests to introduce themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Kushi. And thank you, Sharmila, for uh, being, being um, Bring Gasp as part of this. I'm Amrita. I'm Amrita Gupta. I am part of the Council for Arts and Social Practice, which is an organization based out of Navi Mumbai and three other chapters in India. We started out in 2013, and uh, I'm very happy to be part of the Global We Residency. We've uh, been part of the symposium at the Chitraini Foundation as well, and also the other conversations that are happening as part of this portal. So thank you very much. I look forward to today. Hi, I'm Sharmika. I'm one of the curators of, uh, of, the, of the Mumbai portal. And I am part of the Compound 13 Lab, which is like a maker space and a learning space for young kids of Tadavi who come through the ACON Foundation. And uh, we sort of provide a kind of community space. We have a library. We have people coming in and teaching you know, various things like music, performance, art, design uh, to the young people who are wanting to you know, learn different things at that way. We also have an artist residency in which we call filmmakers, architects, etc., to come and interact with the children who come to the land. And uh, well, as part of the Global V program, uh, Dr. Ben Parry and I are, are the curators of the of the artist residency across eight portals, which are, in, in fact, Chigali is one of the portals, along with the one in Copenhagen, uh, Mexico City, Jakarta, uh, Joburg, am I missing anybody? Joburg, I said Joburg, yeah. So Bangalore. these are the eight, uh, Bangalore. and Bangalore. So we've got eight artists or uh, artist groups who have joined us and we are trying this new experiment in uh, which in spite of it being an artist residency, none of the artists are actually traveling, but we sort of meet every week once on a Monday for the past almost month. And we give each other scores, which are like prompts. And then the rest of us respond to these prompts. So that is what the artist residency is about. And we were very fortunate that uh, Amrita Gupta of uh, CASP, which is the Center for uh, Council, for Council, Council for Art and uh, Social Practice, who are based in Navi, Mumbai, which is New Bombay, which is the sister city of, uh, of Bombay, because Bombay being this island city was getting very, very crowded. So another city was created right next to Bombay and 
it uh, yeah it is a fairly new city and uh, CASP is a sort of has been very active in many of the changes that happened there. And uh, Amrita is not only part, uh, is one of the artists at the artist residency, but she's also uh, free to come and interact with uh, Chigili and to give us this amazing uh, score or a workshop. So yeah, thanks for thanks for that introduction. And before we jump into introductions on the Jiggly portal, I would also like for all our online participants to kind of drop in their names, where they're from, and any questions. We have moderators on every end. Uh, your questions will be coming to us, and we will be interacting with you guys as well. How about introductions at Jiggly? Amazing. Thank you, Kushita. My name is Gilan Irahosa. I'm the facilitator for the Global We in Kigali at the Kigali portal. We're actually located in Kigali in one of the poshest areas, neighborhoods in Kigali, like a, a kilometer away from the president's residence. We are at the rooftop at the uh, co tech co-working space. We are in an inflatable, but of course we are a, per a permanent uh, Photo. Right at the opposite of this uh, rooftop where we are in this space, there's like a forest and that creates a very beautiful scenery. Also, I'd like to um, tell you a little bit about the Global We. The Global We is a United Nations program which actually aims at bringing different voices, unheard voices, unpresented voices, and brings diversity into the world's climate agenda. We talk about things that uh, matter about on our planet or things that affect our planet the most. Um, that brings me to uh, welcoming Kushita to also introduce the question of, of the month. And my guests will introduce themselves and tell you how they're feeling as they are also getting into the interacting with the conversation as far as the question of the month is uh, concerned. Thank you. So, yeah, so, the, so every month since uh, the Global We platforms are started around the portals. We have themes of the month around which we have the world's largest conversation on climate change. Um, and yeah, I would also like to always acknowledge the fact the people that made this kind of possible, IKEA Foundation for having uh, these amazing portals made for us, all the host organizations at the various portals, for example, like Compound 13 Lab here in Mumbai. And so this month's prompt is what makes you hopeful? What are you hopeful for? For the world, for yourselves, for uh, climate change around you? We would like for everyone, including our online viewers, to kind of drop in their comments in the chat and for our participants to share here in the portal stories or strong memories of uh, spaces or even memories that have made you feel hopeful. But we would also really like to, for our guests and participants at the Chigli portal to introduce themselves first. Amazing. You can go ahead. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Okai Kizi Eric, and uh, I'm a software developer that's here in Kigali and a student too. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, after you introduce yourself, you can go ahead and answer the question of the month, uh, which is what makes you hopeful for humanity, for our world, or for yourself. Yes. Can you come back again, please? Um, Kushita said that you can share what makes you hopeful for humanity, for yourself, or the world in general. You can also bring us along in stories, uh, personal stories that you'd like to share with the world, because now it's being streamed and the people are watching you all over the world. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So regarding, regarding that, uh, what are my perspective view about humanitarian? Uh, it's like... Most of the times, we, we don't care about each other as most like we should. So possibly when uh, when it comes to taking care about one and uh, focusing on about the health of another person, your neighbor, that that is uh, an encouragement that we should also mostly focus on. Because possibly like we all have duties to, to run to, we all have something to, to do on a daily basis. So that means I, I might be focused on my own doings and uh, I wake up, uh, I haven't seen my neighbor like for a week or so. I don't know how he is, like for example. So like suddenly when we live in a, in a neighborhood, you probably should know, okay, this is my neighbor, he's doing this and this. 
I think maybe probably when 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 a, a time comes and then you find yourself in a situation, you probably need his or her help. Yeah. So uh, if you don't haven't been communicating, it will be hard for you to to establish that that connection, I guess. So the thing is, don't focus on your soul because this is the world we live in. We all need uh, each other, each other support. Yeah. So on a daily basis, I think. Uh, when you focus mostly on uh, the environment and uh, and the neighborhood, so I think I'll probably stay from there, and uh, maybe probably later on I'll, I might add something else. Amazing! We have another amazing guest. Uh, we have another amazing guest who's going to introduce herself and what she does and how she's feeling this morning, and she'll dive into the question of the month: What is hope? What, what, what makes you hopeful for humanity, for yourself? Any stories that you'd like to share? Yes. Thank you. My name is Giselle. I'm a student and I live here in Kigali. Uh, basing on the question that I asked it, oh, what gives me hope as humanity? Just for me that I, I, I still have life, it's a hope. And based on the climate, for example, you can have a plan, a plan of going somewhere, and you can say that if there is no change, I go, I will go somewhere. And if if the climate goes as how you planned, it's better for you. Mm -hmm. And amazing, amazing. I would like to say that you know. Um, the fact that we've been given this whole platform of globally to get to be included as uh, the youth, as different generations. Um, I actually seen uh, the other facilitator, the colleague of, the colleague of Kushita, and I was very impressed of how um, all ages, like they're taking uh, women who are in another generation from mine to be able to partake or to participate into the global we generation and do into the global we program i would say that that is like that gives me hope that the the that the world is going somewhere by uh, creating this inclusive environment for the youth to express themselves and to advocate for the climate, uh, the climate and the protection of our environment. Vishita, tell us from yeah, your side. I, I can see. I think, so I think yeah, I think it's really nice that uh, we've kind of jumped into what we were kind of pointed about to tap into today with Amrita here. You know, a lot of you spoke about how, um, like, especially like Giselle said, that you said that the fact that you are alive now or the fact that uh, you have, you know, surround, there's like a lot of nature surrounding you right now. Things that, you know, things like these that make you hopeful. And a lot of that comes from like the kind of eco habitats that we kind of create around us. And a lot of do, that has to do majorly with water, one, yes, and two, with soil. And today we have Amita here, uh, you know, about to talk to us about thinking about soil with soil. And so why don't you kind of jump into what you have planned for us today? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, will you be sharing the screen now? Or we, we can. Okay. I'm just uh, so uh, Amita here has prepared like a very fun uh, and informative presentation for us today. Uh, so we're going to just share our screen and talk a little bit more about that and jump right into the workshop. Do we have another participant joining us at the Giggly Portal? Uh, someone is joining the portal, and I'm very excited to welcome them as we also keep on uh, learning.
as we, as Kushi has already given a little introduction, we're going to quickly Next. Yes, so this I begin with a workshop prompt before I go to the stories of the context of our work in, 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 in Navi Mumbai and also juxtapose that with, uh, with the Maharashtra, uh, Maharashtra Nature Park, which I will invite uh, Sharmila to talk a little bit more about that. So here, if you see uh, the word soil, so I have sort of broken it up in a way. There's soil and also soil and oil, right? So what does oil here sort of, uh, you know, evoke in you all? So oil is obviously an extractive aspect from soil, right? So when you when you are juxtaposing this playing with this with this word, so oil immediately takes us to the extractive practices of the global world wars around oil. You think about the art in the Arctic, the drilling around art in the Arctic that is going on because that caused causing a lot of environmental distress to plants, animal animals. Uh, uh, sorry. To the planet yeah, to the planet itself, with uh, there's uh, you know ice melting, ocean patterns changing, and obviously weather patterns changing, rain patterns changing because we are all sort of interconnected, right? And also, how do you see? So, so it's just a juxtaposition of soil as emotion, and also soil as the other side kind of words that I've put: uh, memory, touch, flow, roots, place, smell experience and belonging juxtaposed with neoliberalism's imposition of, of digging out soil for profit, right? So this is the kind of exhibition that I want to work around with. Uh, again, when we go to uh, inviting you all to uh, think around soil and what are the words, what are the feelings that soil invokes and from your own stories, from your own personal stories, from your own contexts, right? Um, so I will now quickly sort of introduce uh, the work of CASP in Navi Mumbai, where I live uh, for 20 years now, and I'm a, a migrant, and uh, Navi Mumbai has become home, and how do we as residents sort of respond to the whole kind of ecological collapse that is happening at the uh, Navi Mumbai International Airport site? Uh, mm -hmm. Can we go to the next? Yes. Slide? Next yeah, this is our uh, this is our uh, uh, project. Yeah. Even when you see from up there, there were just numbers here. Again, there's a juxtaposition of of how policymakers look at people on the ground as numbers, you know, but not as people's stories. And uh, so, can we go to the next? So here, there's a quick map of, of like Charmila was also talking about of Bombay and Navi Mumbai. So you see the planning for Bombay and for Navi Mumbai started, for, Navi Mumbai was conceptualized in 1964 uh, by three architects, Charles Correa, um, and there are two other themes right now. I cannot, I cannot uh, remember them, but it's there. And so Navi Mumbai was built across the harbor and it was like uh, imagined as a new city, as a better planned city, uh, and with and also sort of uh, you know Bombay is so crowded and so stretched in resources, where Navi Mumbai could sort of absorb some of that. So that's how this whole uh, context in Navi Mumbai came up. And uh, you want to. I just want to say that Bombay being an island city, yeah. there was a very limited area. Whereas Navi Mumbai, because it was in the mainland, the chances of it expanding yeah. were a little more. But uh, I guess what Amrita will bring to you is the fact that, you know, when you say that there was nothing there, it means a lot of marginalized, unheard voices I mean, be it the local people, the indigenous people, the vegetation, the plants, animals, forests, hills, lakes, were all there. 
which as city dwellers we thought that it was nothing yeah. and that becomes the crux of how of of the problems that casp is now actively sort of engaging in because whenever we look at land we don't think of land as being an ecosystem as being an habitat to non humans and we only think of land which is occupied by, by humans as something where things exist everything else is empty for us and i think that is what one needs to continuously reinforce in our minds that uh, there is no empty land there is no barren soils it is filled with it is filled with uh, it's filled with animals organisms plants water bodies uh, mountains minerals in the soil it is there it's all there but it's only when we can use it that we think it's being it's being developed or it's being real otherwise we think it's empty and that i think the lot i just want to sort of bring in also while we uh, while amrita does present uh, this wonderful presentation that she's made for us i would encourage my participants in chigli and also online if you do have any questions while oh, while she talks about uh, about soil or about the history of the city please feel free to ask so we will also be looking at questions online and also from the participants in the chigli board like right. the next yes amazing um i would like to welcome my guests to ask any questions if they have any i also have something curious to ask and to add up to what she presented okay. yes please do you want to do it now or do we now um, i would like to ask one thing how uh, um, after seeing the presentation the first uh, paper the first slide it said about the way soil is related to the emotions can you help us dig deep into that because usually people disregard the importance of the soil like honestly <laughs> to be honest this is the first time i've just sat down and reflect on what the importance of soil is because without soil it is like we would be living on a groundless earth our, our planet earth would be groundless and we can't find anywhere to plant our, our crops our stuff for eating we cannot find uh, things that we should use for like as raw materials for the construction but i would also like to like you to elaborate a little bit more about how the soil can relate uh, is linked or interconnected with the emotions <laughs> yes yes i think let us go through the rest of the slides and we'll come back to this question because in any case there'll be a short kind of a workshop that i will uh, ask you all to do of soil as emotion and through words that evoke that but firstly i want to i mean this the what i'm going to talk about our project is a very very emotional one and uh, i think uh, it'll just sort of connects give you some connections to the question and then we can come that Um, yes to, definitely yeah so this is uh, the signage of the navi mumbai international airport uh, in um, in um, in ulwe uh, area of navi mumbai and uh, this has been uh, being constructed on wetlands it has uh, displaced 3500 families from 10 villages uh, there is uh, there are migratory migratory birds who come to the wetlands so uh, you know their habitats have been uh, sort of completely disrupted and and the 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 funniest part is that you are doing a uh, bring an airport in uh, where migratory birds come so when there is also the the, the danger of you know once this uh, airport is built their routes remain the same so there is a thing of bird crashes with with uh, you know with with uh, airplanes so when uh, there has, has been a lot of of protests against this by environmental groups by project affected people by local citizens uh, by activists right from uh, it was 
sort of conceptualized in 1997 and in 2007 it got uh, approval and after that there has been a lot of lot of uh, protests I and mean, long-term protests but there's also the one that scientists that you see here it is you see the black paint so it is actually uh, uh, you know marking this <laughs> you know image or this this whole the idea of the Navi Mumbai airport as something which is which is very very uh, you know has sort of completely disrupted lives livelihoods and people. So you see, it's an angry sign. You know, somebody has had splattered black paint on it. We don't want it there. You know, this is, so this is the signage that sort of um, uh, Casp and, uh, you know, uh, collaborate in the project, Kush Badwar, who's an artisan filmmaker, also a resident of Navi Mumbai. This became a sort of impetus for us to sort of, you know, try and understand what is the politics of this whole, land acquisition, what are the stories of the people, and I'll just go, uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, you see uh, the blasting signal. So uh, there's this 92, there was this 92 meters hill, which is the Ulwe Hill, mm -hmm. which is connected to the Western Ghats. Um, and that has been blasted, that has been blasted, and a lot of its material, which is basalt rock, is part, or it has been made, the term, I mean, the, the flat, Tamak, you know, the land or for, uh, you know, for raising the land from the wetlands, uh, you know, the material from the hill. So there is a destruction of the hill. There is a destruction of, uh, of 3,500, you know, families' homes. There is the destruct, uh, destruction of habitat, uh, human, non-human, plants, animals, insects, all of it, you know, and also wetlands. And the funniest part is because this is part of the wetlands. Every time during even the construction process, when there's monsoons, this entire place floods up. So what are we doing? So when we are, are we building a, you know, when we'll have the airport ready, will it be flooded during monsoons? And what what is what is going to happen? You know, we don't know yet. So these are the kind of stories uh, that uh, that we sort of started encountering from 2019 onwards. Uh, when we started doing field work uh, together and sort of brought in, um, you know, some of these uh, images that we, uh, we found on the site. So you can see <laughs> ignoring a warning as, can cause much mourning, you know, so something like this on the site itself and uh, the blasting signal. And again, when you see soil as emotion, you know, when you're thinking of the word blasting and what is doing to the soil, you know, that's also that so it's 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 not just about it's you know, violence. It's violence. It's violence. It's pure violence, right? Uh, so these are the kind of words that I you know wanted to sort of you know bring into this conversation. And uh, can we go to the next? Yes, this is the shed from uh, from which you can see the hill uh, being blasted. And a lot of workers also rest in this in this shed from. From when they take a break from the blasting, um, you know, job that they have to do, and uh, and if you see the material that is sort of covering this uh, this shed is packaging material of blasting uh, uh, material. So it is the cardboard, dynamites. yeah, the cardboard boxes which carry dynamites, right? So you have the hill being blasted, you have the shed covered with plastic material, you have workers, tired workers. <laughs> Uh, tired workers resting in this makeshift kind of a thing in extreme heat conditions in, uh, you know, in terrible weather conditions also. And uh, so what are we actually doing? And you see that lone tree next to the blasting shed, you know, that's the only little piece of uh, pool area yeah. in the whole, you know, uh, vast swath of the airport land that is, uh, that, uh, that we came across. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a black, uh, you know, lot of, that's a Ulwe hill that you see, but it's just, a, you know, part of a hill because a lot of it is blasted out. And uh, these are, uh, you know, dry, uh, you see, fishing nets that you see from the creek, which is also going to be, you know, covered up. And uh, it's, it's again about loss, right? There's emotion and there's also loss and there's, there's, uh, you know, there's memory, the memory of people going early morning to fish 
you know, there's all they sing together. The, you know, is there so many things that you you associate with soil and land? Um, so can we go to the next? This is a part of the construction site again, um, and and what you see in this valley-like formation is basically. Uh, there are two rivers that are being recoursed as part of this uh, project, is the Unwe River and the Gadi River. So this was the sort of recoursing, you know, area for the Unwe River that was being uh, being sort of uh, done. And uh, you know, at the center, you see there's it looks like a ambassador. Uh, car which is also again a government kind of a sign that you know and then you you see the uh, landscape the skyscape of 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 Unwe node of you know again uh, you know this whole thing of the city uh gobbling over you know open landscapes um can we go next yes so this was another tree that we found a lone tree standing Amidst blasted soil, right? If you're on the on the on the on the left, and uh, I wish I knew the name of this tree, but uh, we could not really uh, do that exercise. But what you see on the on the right is the same tree that we took uh, to our exhibition uh, of this project in Goethe Institute in Delhi and Calcutta. But there you see some element of hope because you see the leaves of the tree. Uh, on top of electrical wires. So there's uh, some sort of a transition that, you know, that we had, we've sort of found. And it and this pasting on of, of this image uh, on, um, on a courtyard wall in Goethe Institute was not, uh, you know, it, it just happened. And after it was pasted, we found out the, the leaves of the tree is on the electrical wire. Mm -hmm. You know, so it wasn't planned. It just, it's, it just sort of, worked out this way. So that's why I want to juxtapose these things and how can you imagine, you know, this tree, a lost tree, you don't know it died, mm. but it again, we're reimagining it in, in our, it's in our space. It's this yeah. blasted hill. It's this blasted hill, yes. And so a lot of emotions that yes. automatically adjectives that get, get added on to and you see these images, mm. isn't it? Yeah. And these are just some of the, you know, press material. You have GVP appoints Ahadid Architects to design the Mumbai International Airport. And this is again the top down from up there. They were just numbers, you know, seeing people as numbers and not as people. Mm. Uh, then you, and then there, there is some element of protest where, uh, the locals demand uh, the reading the headlines. That's what it's just. There's like uh, you know you're demanding the airport to be named after people or to be named after flamingos, but nobody's really talking about the airport coming after. Them. It's it's really funny to read all these headlines. Yeah, and this latest one, the PA peeps leader, you know, uh, DB Patel, he's a local leader of of the indigenous people there. And that was seen to be the only last resort where they could still hold up power, you know, because beyond before that, all their protests, I mean, they had to, they had to move. They had, there were families living in, in a, amidst demolished houses, neighbors' houses were demolished, but one, one family was there, you know, and a lot of the other images you can find on our website, uh, because I didn't want to put everything here. And of course, now you have Adani, uh, who is a major business tycoon in India who has been given the uh, uh, the commission. commission to sort of build the Navi Mumbai airport and uh, well he's somebody who controls a lot of wealth and a lot of you know, wow. power uh, and uh, and this is you know sort of just gives a sense of and as being residents there and seeing the hill going down every day, you know, and then of course we are in touch with. Uh, we can go to the next. I wanted to invite. I wanted to introduce you, uh, uh, a indigenous poet activist Pundalik Matre, who has been at the forefront of the struggle against the Mumbai International Airport, and he has written a lot of poetry. He has there are poetry songs. He's uh, he's a published author, and we are going to invite him. Uh, 
to the portal on the 27th, where he's going to read his protest poetry against uh, this whole struggle, uh, you know, uh, of, of losing their land, losing their, uh, you know, uh, ancestral memories in a sense, because yeah. now uh, livelihoods, livelihoods uh, and also uh, just social sort of interactions, yeah. social uh, communities, and uh, I guess also the flora and fauna, which yes. becomes a part of your life. Yeah. And uh, I don't know, you lose, I mean, culturally you lose, you lose in terms of land, you're losing in terms of an identity because, you know, many people belong to a particular region and they form their identities from those regions. And then when that is taken away, who are you? You are a nomadic, migrant, unwanted person. Yeah. So what and, does that do to the community? Yeah. And now they, and the, all the, you know, they have been taken to a rehabilitated land, which is again, not very far away from the lost land. So they, when they are traveling in that where they're constantly seeing this, you know, the space going uh, away, changing. changing, going away. And when they are, uh, uh, recently we had, I had gone and visited them in the rehabilitated land and the kind of stories, you know, we miss, uh, it's so hot here, you know, because it's apartment blocks. There are no trees, you know, so they will have to rebuild this whole thing of trees in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, they talk about uh, the tree that they remember at the pond in the village, which used to be very, very cool for them, you know, in the summer they will go and start. So these are the kind of emotions attached to place, to space, uh, you know, to your everyday life. And uh, these are some of the things that uh, Pungadikji also speaks in his poems, and I wanted to in introduce him in this context. There are also other people uh, who are part of the struggle, and we're trying to collect, collect, collect their stories uh, which, through small publications and all that. But it's a very, very, because it is a very precarious space, even our mode of work is very slow. Uh, we have to move through the, uh, through, I think, the emotions of people here, you know. And uh, that's that's what I wanted to sort of uh, quickly uh, talk about, you know, soil, uh, the emotions related to soil. What what does the word blasting do, do to you? You know, when you see a whole hill, which has been your hill right from the childhood being taken away. What does that do when you have rocks uh, falling on um, schools, you know, and uh, mothers getting very, very, Think about panic. their children panic and there's this whole suddenly they ask that uh, you know this, the the notification from sitco comes at close the school even in midterm so that's when the mothers there's a protest from mothers also which happened which they you know they took to sitco and said we cannot close the school the local school uh, where our children go to in mid-year what will happen to them they lose a whole year you know so there's so many so many different kinds of uh, of narratives that are there and now in a uh, we want to work long term in the rehabilitated space and sort of build a sort of memory archive uh, through this uh, through this work that we've done. And yeah, so can we go to the next? Yes, and I want to bring this also in juxtaposition to uh, uh, to the Navi Mumbai International Airport, airport, and uh, Maharashtra Nat um, Nature Park Society. So park is just opposite. Uh, you know, this school that we are here in, and there's be, they're, they've done wonderful workshops, uh, you know, uh, in uh, as part of the global, Kambal Thirin Lab has done uh, there. And I just wanted to, uh, for uh, Sharmila to bring in the juxtaposition of the story of this park yeah. as against what is going on in the airport site. So why, uh, uh, where Amrita is in Navi Mumbai, uh, nature is being denuded and we are building this, you know, massive airport. The Maharashtra Nature Park is 32 acres of what used to be wasteland. It used to be a dumping ground where the waste of the city was just dumped. And then uh, through the work of one of the earlier governments, and actually uh, it was this one person and it's always one person who decides to sort of make the change and, you know, do something which then brings about that change. So they covered the existing dump yard with around five to six meters of soil. 
and then they started planting trees and over a period of about uh, 20 years if you go there it is it is beautiful it is you know very very wooded shady and they have all kinds of medicinal plants which are sold at less than i mean 20 rupees is how much i i mean for a very very small price and people can yeah, go five and five plants for a dollar yeah <laughs> five different beautiful plants for a dollar and people can just go in they can rest there are these large sort of halls and there are uh, uh, auditoriums where people can sit and a lot of school children are introduced to nature there uh, there is a green harvesting plant the there Trails also. Take Trails uh, where, and you have a lot of migratory birds coming in, and they've got these small rocks on which these birds are painted. So it's it's a very beautiful, very friendly, very green, and a very uh, you know, like a green lung. Green lung of the city. Oh. Yes. And I just wanted to quickly say that uh, Tharavi, the area where uh, the Maharashtra Nature Park is, is also under redevelopment. And the same person who has taken over the construction of, of Navi Mumbai Airport, Adani Group, is also uh, going to, is, has, been, has been commissioned to redevelop the Tharavi area. Yes. Yeah, so we don't know what is going to happen to the Maharashtra Nature Park. Will they keep it? Will they redevelop the entire thing? So we don't know. So this whole thing of, you know, the Navi Mumbai airport site also has a precarious site. Uh, the Maharashtra Nature Park, that in, in, in any way in itself is in transition. Yeah. And But we don't know this beautiful park, which has come, uh, you know, on top of a dumpy. There is a high point resolution that says to stop, but yeah. it doesn't, is not included in the, the Yeah. And no, uh, and we can go to the soil thing back. Okay. First uh, slide. So yeah, I think uh, yeah. Coming back to the question that Ida so rightly asked about emotions with respect to soil, do you, would you like to dwell a little more into that, and we can jump into the into that part of the workshop? Uh, yes. So I think in a way, I think the 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 work. I mean, the the images that I so showed you from this blasted area must have evoked some emotions in you, right? Because if you're seeing, uh, you know, so much soil being sort of dug up for profit completely. And, and also you have to be critical about ourselves as complicit in the whole process also, right? So, um, and, and also, you know, the whole notion of belonging, like I said, the memory of, of people uh, going to the pond, uh, and sitting under a tree, you know, that is also a, a memory that is also emotion around place and soil is place, soil is belonging, soil is smell, experience, roots, right? And this whole uprooting that has happened, displacement that has happened, displaced bodies walking around, uh, walking around Ulwe node. And when they cross the sea, they're constantly sort of saying that, oh, in our village, it was like that. Oh, in a village, it was cooler. Oh, it was, it was it thanda tha. You know, thanda is very cool during the summers because there were so many trees and there are no trees in this node. This is apartment blocks which are so close to each other. Uh, there are families which have been sort of separated in the way the land has been alloc allocated, you know, uh, to, uh, to people. So uh, there is this, you see this whole, I mean, there is also this acceptance, this de yes, development will happen, we don't sort of, we can't do anything about that, but what about our rights, right? And, uh, and what can the arts do uh, in this, in this uh, scenario is something that, you know, as practitioners, as people uh, responding, you know, reacting, reflecting on this. And this is where I, I just want to, again, when you see S and oil, I have separated, <laughs> This, but at the same time, they're talking with each other. And, and this, this is what I want you all to reflect on. And also from your own context, uh, you know, I would invite you all. I think there's soil from your backyard there. To, there yeah, is, I think we can stop the screen sharing. And yeah. Can... 
also uh, during one of the one of the residency sort of meetings there was a very beautiful thing that happened when uh, amrita more or less in many indian languages one was ma which is mother so the word ma is how many of the uh, you know in many languages of india ma is for mother and ma ti so something that belongs to the mother no yeah is, also, mati is mati also means soil and it was during her conversation that we sort of suddenly realized how close these words are and that ma and mati mother and soil is something is which phonetically also comes very close together but uh, it's also, i wonder yes. what is in your language and uh, you know if these words are coming together but then the mother earth yeah. and to the soil being you know the sustenance of both the human and the natural world is i mean it's it's something that we can understand and it if you really think about it then it does uh, sort of bring out a lot of emotions i mean you have so many uh, iconic images where people kiss the soil of their motherland or they pick up a, a handful of soil and carry it with them when they are forced to migrate to some other place Yes. the soil of a space is responsible in uh, bringing out the flavors of the vegetables and fruits which grow yeah. out of it soil. yeah and uh, so you know that like because i come from near goa which is the coastal region i feel that because that soil has a little salt in it the mangoes that grow there are have the most divine taste and Uh, mangoes from no other place in the world taste as good as the mangoes from my country or from my village yeah. and that is the quality of the soil that is not only making the food or the water taste the way it does it also translate into how we are so i hope that is emotionally enough for you the connection between emotions and soil and how you know connected we are to each other would you like to share um amazing um actually while you were doing the presentation i feel like my guest already has a question to ask because he mentioned that he's going to ask and i also try to comment on what you said because that presentation was amazing but also like the sad story about how the heels were being taken and it's part of like you felt like a part of your identity or who you are was taken away from you um i would like to welcome my guest to ask the question yes <laughs> Yes, thank you. So before I jump uh, fast to the question, but I really want to talk about the emotion part. Like for example, the the way you are connected to your village, there is that connection. You feel like I have something back in my village. If it's taken away from me, it's going to be kind of devastating. For example, you just talked about the fruits that come out of there. So you see, you have that thing that's you feel like there's something. Um, good that comes from the village that you're in so it's a kind of like a possession you have from that village mm -hmm. so okay uh, adding to that i had a friend uh he's a sudani and uh, he came to visit so it was a long time and then he came to my, um here in rwanda and he was like you guys live in an eco friendly environment you should keep up that because you have nature surrounding yourself uh, you guys and like for example for us uh, sometimes i have to drive for an hour or two to be able to find a tree mm -hmm. so if we you see wow. the nature is surrounding you it's uh, it's better so try and uh, see on how you can uh, have it and conserve it with you mm -hmm. so i think emotion emotion is really connected to the 
I can say to the soil because it's part of the environment. Mm -hmm. So if you have a better environment, you also have a kind of feel good. That's how I can say about it. That, that kind of brings me back to the question of the month about hope. There's something you mentioned about uh, Pundalik Mah uh, uh, Pundalik. It's actually an activist when it comes to all things agriculture and preserving, protecting the environment. And something that you mentioned, I agree with. I'm not going to demean the contribution or the power of one person in a whole community. But I'm asking, what does it take for us to come together as the people of the community without sending one person? I know one, one, one person, one individual can make a whole change in the world, but also why don't we come together as a whole community of Mumbai or Benganuru to kind of like fight against that and to make sure we sign petitions or also that takes me to something I'm curious about to ask. Has there been any petitions that were signed to ask the government to stop the exploitation, the exhaustion, taking the identity away from your people? Also, uh, remembering that we're being followed by by sending us questions and also telling us your perspective about home. Yeah, please welcome. Um, yes, there has been a very, very strong and robust protest against uh, against this whole making and building of, of, of uh, the Nebu International Airport. Uh, I think uh, to, by environmental groups, there were petitions by the local people, the project AHS. affected villagers, there were a lot of self-led protests in the sense, I'll just give you a, uh, I'll just give you, and also perform and, and uh, performance which sprung up from within their own context. You know, it was not no, none of us going and, you know, because we, after we saw the, the whole strength of the protests there, you know, we just, as artists, we were just uh, observers. You know, yeah. All we could do is, uh, as create this archive for, for remembering that this was there, you know, we could not, we, we, it's, I mean, <laughs> my, my thing becomes, uh, you know, my, oh, yeah. I get goosebumps when I think of it, but there's one particular performance that was uh, done by the villagers there. So they basically, they created a dummy body, uh, which signifies the Navi Mumbai International Airport, their land. It was covered with white cloth with red splattered, uh, you know, signifying that. So they carried this dummy body straight to the Sitko, uh, the Sitko now, office. Sitko is the one which has sort of led, uh, you know, the led, uh, yeah, led this development project with the government and with the private sector. And so they went and performed their singing songs, mourning, crying, and satire in front of Sitka office. There is, there is material, there is uh, press coverage uh, around this also. And uh, so it was all people led, you know, I, I'm talking about Pundalik Matri because we have actually been speaking to him for so long, you know, and, and he's a, he's become a friend, a guide of sorts, but there are also many, many, many other stories that we want to sort of collect now and make part of this archive through oral stories, narratives, taking recordings and all of that. And uh, in between there was this pandemic also, right? Because then we couldn't do anything at that time. And that is a, that was a time when the government took advantage of this pandemic thing and sort of really, really forced people to leave. Like Pundarik Ji and the Udbe Gao, a lot of families were still there. But um, they sort of stopped electricity, they stopped water, they stopped that, did all kinds of things. And so they had to leave, you know, and there was no option. So all this forced thing that happened, because they knew the pandemic was there. So obviously people are scared, they cannot congregate in numbers, they cannot protest. So why not use this also as to, a you know, tool. To, yeah, yeah, as a tool to drive the people completely out of the airport site. But as she said, you know, when there were rocks from the blasts, coming on to the schools, the mothers of these children who were going to these schools, very organically, they gathered together and they protested. So I, uh, when I said that a single person can be a moving force, 
I was not sort of replacing that with the role that one has as a community. All I was saying is that even if one person thinks different from what the others are thinking, and if that person is powerful enough, then they can themselves question and lead and hope for change. Has that, uh, has, has that those different things that happened restored hope for your community, hope for yourselves, what do you think about all the, yes. of those protests, the activities? Have they made any improvement in terms of being hopeful that your community is back to on the right track, that the people are happier than they used to be? Please share with us. Um, in the sense that, um, I, like I said, when they led this protest of to rename the airport in favor of the local leader, there were about 2,000 people who came. Right, and that was COVID time. So Navi Mumbai was roads were filled with, people. with with people, you know, wanting. And I think that was the last, because during the COVID time, you know, you are forced out of the land. Because you know you've left it. Now what 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 other ways we can still hold on, you know? So instead of a bal thakare, you know, a name naming it was one of the yeah. things that so there, there there was this whole protest with about 2000 people on the roads in navi mumbai asking that at least the airport we, you have taken the land you have taken everything displaced displaced everything. us okay fine all right and they also you know there's rehabilitation the politics of rehabilitation and moving and you know it's, i mean again it's sort of starting to begin again, right, in another space. So there's a lot of that people are dealing with in, at the daily level. But at the same time, they carried on this protest that we want at least the airport to be named in memory of our leader, you know, yeah. who was at the forefront of the struggle, again, against land acquisition in the 1970s. So these things, and it's all very, very people-led, you know, all the protests are very people-led, very uh, stories that come from them and all of that. So. Um, Yes, there, of course, yes, there has been a lot of petitions and all of that. And uh, now the struggles are still there, but they are different. But, you know, uh, they've moved to this new place. There is readjustments happening. And uh, it's uh, it's a different kind of an engagement now because, uh, you know, the land has take, been taken over. Right. Uh, Sorry but, to cut you short a little bit. Uh, I, I feel like we can be sharing and discussing a little bit more, but Kushita is welcome to also let us dive in, right into the workshop. Yeah, so I um, yeah, I'm really sorry. Like, I know we're making, we're talking about really powerful issues, but since I know a lot of the online participants as well have come, uh, are, have joined us especially, specifically for the thinking of the soil workshop. So would you like to try a little bit more? Yes. That? So what I would request you all to, I mean, I think it's, this has given a sense, a context about what soil means emotionally. And also, if you see the image of the tree that was at the land and that was at the exhibition site and by itself sort of, it placed itself on electrical wires, you know, so there is again that. So how do you sort of imagine uh, soil through words which come from your own stories, from your own context, and there you have so, soil. And if you can write down words in soil, in mati, in in, in so in I think mati. we can. Yeah. So uh, why don't the participants take sheets of paper? Yeah. And how about the participants sitting at home joining us online? Why don't you guys as well take like you know sheets of paper and write and if you, you have, soil have soil around. Yeah. If you don't have soil with you, you can write using pens or pencils. Even soil from uh, uh, even soil from plants, plants and all will work. So if you're gonna take the soil that you brought with you and you're gonna yes. like yes so like the second uh um what? slide that we had shown the words that we had shown so whatever you will be writing on your white piece of paper now you'll be writing using the soil so add like a few drops of water to it and i think you'll be able to flow better on the piece of paper and yeah you can try with it more yeah so what is the color of the soil that you have in the bottle we have the the brown soil the ordinary one it's kind of mixed with the sand and because it rains today so it's like a mixture of the soil and the water all together and that is going to to make it easier for us to write on the white okay 
Nice. That's great. So where do you know, uh, I mean, uh, maybe this soil also has a little bit of history, right? I mean, from your own context, from your own, you can also connect the soil to your own stories, personal stories from where you come from, what are the memories you carry from your own land? What does soil mean to you? What does what is the soil that has come from the backyard also mean to you, you know, in a sense? You can draw with soil, you can write with soil. It's nice that it rained and yeah. it's natural water. <laughs> water is part of. So what are the kind of fruits and vegetables that grow in this soil? Uh, there's uh, usually there is what we call uh, the, you can you can plant the cabbages here. There's also these greens that are a little bit like bitter. We call them dodo in Kigali. Most of the times we have this campaign called uh, uh, like you have to like have a vegetable yard in the in when in your backyard. It's like yeah, for the children to fight against malnutrition and all that kind of stuff. So basically, I would if I translate it to Kinyaranda, it's like Mohinge Uturima Tukijikon. It's like these small pieces of land whereby you plant vegetables so that uh, the, the children would grow up eating that and all that kind of stuff. Are, are we doing the workshop together? Yeah. Yeah. So I have my notebook here and we have a plant with us right here. Like we have a So I'm going to use the soil from that. And you're going to use the soil that you have. Yes, and it's interesting that this soil, we don't know where it's from, right? No, it is from the nature <laughs> park. Oh, okay, okay, great, great. Okay, then it has that history in it. Yeah. Okay. So, to you. so uh, as a response to the score, that was given during the artist residency. Mm -hmm. The first score, which was written by Ben, yeah. he was in Malaysia, so he got some soil from there. Mm -hmm. And if you see, I will share it with you next Monday. I can show it to you now. Uh, So he put the soil from Malaysia into the nature park. Okay. And then he dug these two holes. Uh -huh. And uh, picked out the soil from there, which was given to me. Uh -huh. And I am going to plant this plant. And this is a beetle nut, a beetle leaf plant. So it's a, uh, it's a leaf which is eaten in India. And it will be planted in the soil that we got from the nature park. Oh, nice. But in my house. Okay. So we are just taking that continuity of, mm. Mm. of filling something that you take away at the same time, yeah. taking them to some other place. Uh, uh, you should respond from the should should respond. Because it's already given. Now they should respond from their own, own context, own stories, own personal of people online. I think there are a few people online. Um if uh, if our participants online are also doing the workshop with us, why don't you guys comment uh, with what words you're kind of uh, adding to the soil uh, on the paper, or even if you're using pens and pencils, like throw them in the comments and we'll have our moderators reach them to us. And we're pretty sure we're going to be reading a few of your questions anytime soon. Indeed. Indeed. Yeah. Yeah. This kind of reminds me of uh, back in the days when we were young and we used to play with the mud and it's like very fun to play with the, with yes. the soil. I mean, <laughs> I feel like I've grown a little bit younger, like five years younger right now. <laughs> Yeah, I, even when, uh, you know, my parents and I would uh, travel across the country and, uh, you know, we've gone to places like Coimbatore in Tamil Nadu and whatnot. My father has this practice of not wearing his footwear when we're in 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 the mud in the soil and he's like yeah it's it's nice to be one with the earth and it was always believed that you should have hair on your head and your footwear and you, your feet need to be barren so you need to kind of have that acupressure or you know 
or uh, so it kind of um helps with your blood circulation and yeah. whatnot and then the hair on your head kind of protects you and my father in his very fatherly way would always be like yeah what kind of a world we've turned into where we'll wear the largest shoes possible to kind of pad us from anything yeah. that could come to us and we will shave off our heads to kind of, you know <laughs> so we've come like the full circuit <laughs> Yes, I think for that, uh, there's, there's some researchers that were conducted, I think, saying that walking barefooted into the nature, it's, uh, it's very good to your health. Uh, that's what I think. Yeah, what do you think? So I don't know. Yeah, so sometimes walking barefooted is real nice. Yeah. Why don't you show us a few of the words that you guys have written down? Because I'm pretty sure Ira has written like more than one sheet. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I've, I've put together something. I don't know if you can read what I wrote, and I'll give a little bit of an explanation of what it means. Yes, please. Please go ahead. I can't. B E A. I'm holding this for you. Yeah, can you see? E A U beauty. Beauty. Do you yes. do we did? Oh nice. <laughs> nice. The reason why I brought beauty is because uh there's a lot of artifacts, there's a lot of beautiful things that come out of uh, the soil. The soil for me represents beauty also. For me, like the believer who believes in God as a, a Christian, we believe that a man was made from the, the soil, you know, from the soil mixed with the water and it made a person, a whole human being like me. So for me, the soil represents beauty. And it also this beauty that is like never ending. It's this beauty that is everlasting, regardless of the fact that the soil is something we step on. We step on it. The soil, we use it in a lot of bad ways and good ways, but it does not stop giving us the productivity or giving us a lot of opportunities to survive. Uh, when, you, when you go into poetry, you find a lot of people using soil to kind of create a lot of things that, and the soil does not complain. It keeps on giving us the beauty, the beauty um, that we deserve to have as the people of the world. And I feel like you thinking with the soil is like a great start for us to also to love the soil back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank How you. about the other participants? Show us what you're reading. I've got here. So it is health. Yeah. You're gonna have to hold it at an angle because there's like a lot of exposure of the light on oh, white. The light. She can help me with it. Like for you. Oh, yes, okay. much better. Uh, yes. So my perspective on how I consider the soil being uh, held. So it's a, it comes in a form of, I, I get it from back then when I was a, a, a young kid. My father doesn't usually use um, pharmaceutical products. So he likes to use plants as the medicine. That's where he gets every, everything. Like he, he cures with himself with nature. So the, with the environment. So that's how I consider mostly health because it comes with every great thing. So yeah, that's it. That's lovely. How about Giselle? What have you written on your sheet of paper? This is a plant, even though it's red. You can't see it, no. We really can't. Oh, she's drawn. Drawn, drawn. Yeah. It's a plant, and from that, that, that is where you get the life. Where, what is it? Yeah, and yeah. here I have this one is about enjoying the creation. When you see the plants, you 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 feel you you feel you feel good. You enjoy you enjoy the environment. Yeah. Yes, that is it. Hey. I think Giselle's plant uh, really tied up a lot of the session together. You know, because we started talking about hope about um we spoke about uh, like soil we spoke about emotions and uh you know and other projects
We lost you a little bit, uh, but they'll be back in a minute. Bring about memories. Yeah. O F N A. N A. Yeah. I want to make nature. <laughs> A bit of nature. Yeah. You'll excuse us for a second. Uh, uh, Mumbai portal will be right back in a few seconds. And if you have uh, drawn something or if you have uh, created Can you see us better now? Yes, yes, you're back. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Hi. issue but we're back now and i think that that's what i was talking about you know that how there is always this whenever there's a message of hope there's a plant that comes to it and i think we're almost uh, running out of time so before we had to say our goodbyes i would just like to extend this kind of a question to uh, the participants at both the portals and as well as the participants online if there's any closing thoughts that you'd like to share right now whether it's about hope whether it's about soil whether it's something that you felt like you've heard that you saw today or that you felt like um, that you witnessed today that you would like to take back home with you or you know on your journeys here to the portal and for the viewers uh throughout your you know past week if you had something that you've experienced with respect to hope if there's any last strong memories that you would like to share one last time yes and i'd quickly like to also add uh to soil is also i would like to add uh, the word resilience you know Soil is a very is very resilient, and I think, and that is where from resilience also there's hope. How about the participants of the Jiggly Portal? Would you like to share any last closing thoughts? Anything like that you heard, saw, or felt today that you would like to take back home with you? Uh, the only thing I could add up is uh, 
let's let's join hands and uh, conserve nature and uh, everything that's around us because it's really important to our lives and uh, and everything and our minds amazing i feel super empowered uh, by today's conversation it also has brought a lot of hope for me also thinking that there are people taking the right step in mumbai to make sure that their soil is preserved and that brings back the hope that they were they were kind of like couldn't have for in a, in a long time that makes me really happy and i would like to let my guests say something so that we could wrap up the session okay uh, thank you mm. i'd like to to thank you for the conversation it was very beautiful we have reflected on how so is beautiful mm. and we have to put we have to 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 put the, our co contribution so as to conserve our soil and that is where the environment our environment will be also conserved Thank you. Amazing. I would like to say a huge thank you to our amazing artists from the Mumbai portal, to all the people that have been watching us across the world and my beautiful guests here. And I would like to let you know that if you want to physically be present in one of the portals, we have uh, 21 plus portals present all around the world. You could sign up on www.themuseum for the United Nations, for the for the UN, www.museum for the United Nations.org. Org. And you can also reach to us by emailing us info out museum for the UN.org. And as well, you can uh, find us on all social media platforms by writing in simply museum for the un and slide into our dms write to us tell us if you have any questions let's keep this conversation moving and you could also keep interacting with us in the comment section of this video as well without forgetting i would like to thank to express my gratitude to our partners who are the shared studios and the acre foundation for powering the world's largest inclusive climate conversation to ever happen. And I'm really happy that we got to also participate in this historic uh, event that we are doing on preserving our environment and protecting it with all means. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. And Bye. thank you so much. Thank you. See I love the words. And I'm really hoping to see a lot of you join a few more portals, join the Global Week conversation. And as Amrita was saying, yes, and I love the fact that you're still playing with soil. <laughs> Era, yes, it's very nice. <laughs> Thank you, you so maybe much. we can take a picture together. Let's take a yeah, picture okay. together. All right, amazing. Can you, can we stand here? Yeah. Or just see it or anything? Yeah. 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 Maybe we can come back. No, I want to take a picture for you. You're taking it out. I thought you want to be inclusive. You can take it out with different different. So you can um, stand maybe. Yeah. 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 Yay, thank you very much. Guys, Amazing. thank you for all the participants online and thank you for the wonderful participants at the Chigli portal. I really hope to connect very soon and with more and more guests and more and more conversations. Thank you so much, guys. Pleasure See you, bye. bye.
like all the informal settlements. So I think, uh, you know, these last few messages of hope is also something that um, we shall not ignore. And yes, it's, it's really, really lovely to have a, a like a online presence uh, with like to be able to connect not just across the world, but to viewers online as well. And this is a really fruitful session. And thank you to all of you. Thank you, guys. And also to remind our, our YouTube followers that they can always join the conversation physically on www.themuseum for the United Nations for the UN.org. Thank you very much. Thank you guys.